all right all right all right uh we are back again it has been in fact a rather protracted sabbatical in light of my absence or i guess you can say conspicuous of my absence <laughs> been a long time since i've come on to discuss Amen. The following and the following is the fool not in question. We can't call him the fool in question no more. Because he's been convicted. And so there's nothing in question. Amen. He's he's been convicted. Come on here. By a jury of his peers. And so I don't have to call him the fool in question. Amen. We can flip it and say the convicted fool or the convict that happens to be a fool. Real quick, before we get into this, this is actually the most recent um, Daryl Brooks appearance um, relative to his involvement uh, with Erica Patterson that went utterly left. Uh, speaking of left, it went left. And he punched her in her eye, he ran her over in the car. So this was absolutely separate from his actions and his disposition concerning the Walker Shaw parade. So this is solely involving Erica Patterson. And you know what? I was listening to some of the transcripts uh, of the jail phone call between Mr. Brooks and Erica Patterson and how he threatened her. Basically, remotely had Erica Patterson under duress. Why do I say remotely had her? Because he was in custody and telling her on the phone, if she don't drop this, I got men. I got people that will take you out. Ain't that what he said? And so he this man was such a threat. And, and the the um, the the enormity. Of the dangers. Or should I say the danger of Daryl Brooks. Was so astronomic until he was able to remotely control Erica Patterson via a jail cell. So let's 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 di let's dive into this. Like I said, it's been a while. It's been protracted, but I'm back and I'm better than ever. Come on. Please. In what you have demonstrated over these past three years with me, because I believe that you are on the path that you say that you are. Russ, Russ. Can you get him tissue for Mr. Torbenson? You have an empty box in front of you, I believe. The problem is, as I have to sentence you for these offenses, I have to look at your behavior for these offenses. Oh, well, it was terrible. I have a question for you before I get to my comments from that. In looking at your record, a lengthy one, something jumps out at me. Of crimes. <laughs> you have a number of offenses. A number, come on. Starting in 1999, all the way up to 2011. Some of y'all wasn't even born. Some gaps. <laughs> what happened? What were you doing between 2011 and 2020? Did you live here? Did you live somewhere else? You don't seem to have any criminal contact. What were you doing? Uh, I did live uh, out on the West Coast. That's Is Nevada. That when you had the, got the, that was a 2007 Nevada case. Were you in trouble out there or were you living? A I, was, I was thriving, Your Honor. Thriving. I was working. Wait a minute. How, how was he thriving out there? And that's when he impreg impregnated a minor. Because wasn't didn't he meet Erica Patterson in Nevada? He impregnated a minor. 
And so notice the judge said she, uh, uh, what did she say? That she seems to see no criminal contact. Well, here's the point. That don't mean that he was just because he maybe he didn't get caught. That don't mean that he wasn't doing crime. There's a whole lot of folk that's doing crime that ain't got caught. But again, I don't think he was considered to be thriving by impregnating a minor in the person of Erica Patterson. Let's dive back in. <laughs> Listen to him cry. Had a great relationship with my children. It was... You know what? Can I just say something? Do you notice that how how he's taking this seriously? All right. No, you notice that he's taking this seriously and we know that he's taking this seriously. You know why? Number one, well, there's several reasons, but let me just emphasize this. He's taking this seriously because he realizes. You know, this is, <laughs> you know, you, you ain't you ain't coming out of jail anyway, man. So it, it's I mean, by by default, by process of elimination, you might as well just give it up. And you notice that he never tried to take this to trial because it didn't make any sense, given his previous conviction. That entails him never coming or making the exodus out of jail. In reflection of his involvement, his complicity in the Walker Shaw parade. But my question is this, why is he taking this serious, but he didn't take the case against him in Walker Shaw County serious? He was laughing in the interrogation room. Come on, touch a neighbor, say laughing is not taking something serious. That means you lampooning. You're lampooning what you did. This is a farce to you. This is a joke. And so now, all of a sudden, now he's taking this serious. Why did he take the first one serious? Why? Because all bets are off? Because you know you ain't coming out of jail? Child, you should have known that from the first case. You knew you wasn't getting out of that. And so here's my point. Listen at him crying. I, w I, was, stri I, w I, w I was striving, Your Honor. I w Talking about he was striving, crying. He wasn't doing that at the Waukesha Parade, and he did more damage at the parade versus this. He didn't kill Erica Patterson. She's still living. That was, in other words, that wasn't a homicide. But there were six homicides. Oh, but he didn't seem to take that too serious, did he? I'm surprised he's not talking about subject matter jurisdiction right now. Oh, all right. Y'all know how I get to talking. Uh, well, listen, it's been a while. It's been a while since y'all heard me. So y'all know I got a plethora of words <laughs> against this fool. Not in question, but the convict that happens to be... A fool. Let's jump back in. How old are your children? <laughs> 21, 17, 13. And my youngest daughter just started taking last week. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And, and let me let me put on a facade. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, and also Jackson Sparks was killed by the hands of you when he was eight years old. <laughs> How come you ain't crying about that? Your kids are still alive. While Jackson Sparks is unalive with the rest of the five people. So I don't want to hear this crap. I don't even know why the judge is even entertaining it. Come on, put him away. Sentence him. Sentence him. Put this man back in the cage. Why is he even in this court? He should not be allowed in the pub. Put the animal away. Where he belongs. Which is the one that you shared with EP. My 17 year old daughter. Who oh, start who start to spill me? Oh, so what? So what? Jackson Sparks would never go to college. 
the hell is wrong with what, what, what? I mean, you know, and you know, let me say this. And you know what's crazy? He's still not really being, that's not showing remorse. That's not remorseful. To talk about your kids and how you never. Well, he said later on in this video that he didn't get to see her walk down the aisle. So what? You're even with Jackson Sparks' mother because she'll never be able to see him go down the aisle. The only time they saw him down the aisle when they was, come on, pushing the casket. Come on, man. See, he's not thinking like that. Because he utterly, he obviously, he blatantly, he flagrantly has no remorse. He's not trying to expiate relative to what he did. This man is absolutely unredeemable. Come on. And I'm missing it. Sitting up well, with a crying. Shut your mouth. But that's so a proud of her. Oh, that shut up. That is an amazing accomplishment. I'm I'm talking about you proud of her. She should be ashamed of you. She should change her last name. And it'd be nice if she can change her her ancestry but that can't happen cuz we don't want her turning out like him given that she come from the same she from the sea <laughs> i would i would change my last name and would let no, would not let anybody know that this man this animal was my father Ooh, it's tight but it's right i find your name and say it's strong but it sure ain't wrong. Glad to hear that. She graduated a year early because her academics was so up to par. Yeah, and you had, right, right. And you had no academics. You wasn't no damn attorney. So maybe she will be different from you. Because your, your academics sure wasn't up to no damn par. <laughs> we'll change... The P for par and put ball. <laughs> hey, your academics is behind the bar. And I ain't talking about no bar school. Ooh, y'all didn't hear me. Oh, I'm feeling good. Come on here. It's been a while, y'all. <laughs> so what? Play me a violin. Play me a violin right now. She sounds extraordinary. Oh, judge, please. Um, all right. Right, yeah, change so, the subject. Because that's irrelevant. You were doing well. Right up until you weren't. So looking at this. Yeah, get, let's get back on track. <laughs> let's get to why we're here. It strikes me that... You don't have a relationship that goes on for 17 years or roughly about thereabouts. And the very first incident of violence that we know of between the two of you that we know of results in you following her to a hotel, banging on her door. And when she tries to get away from you, following her, cornering her, punching yeah. her in the face, and ultimately running her over. Wow. Attempted murder. Attempted homicide. Reckless endangerment. <laughs> That's crazy. That, that is was crazy. absolutely outrageous. <laughs> it was horrendous. You're being too kind. And you are... So very lucky. Yeah. Wait a minute. What is this? What, what world is she in? What's lucky about him? There's nothing lucky about not never never coming out of jail. But I know what she's talking about. She's talking about that there was no homicide in this case. Because if it was, then that would have been an additional homicide on top of what he did at the Waukesha Parade. I get it. I get it. That it was her leg 
versus her life, her torso, or her head. It was her. Which would have killed her, likely. Exactly. Exactly. Your behavior was so outrageous. Oh my God. That's an that's an understatement. She's being too kind. <laughs> that it, it it can't be downplayed. Not at all. Clearly. And I look at that in isolation. But wait a minute. Hold up. Now, hey, can I just say something? I know. Well, I did tell you that I was going to be intermittently interjecting my, my, my position on this. But listen, I know that she said it can't be downplayed. We know it can't be downplayed. Because it's existential. We've seen it. It's empirical. It is what it is. All right. But my point is that didn't stop him from trying to downplay that. In the interrogation room when Carpenter was incrementally building to that crescendo of the real story. Which happened in that parade. Well, they both were real stories. But what I'm saying was he tried to downplay the homicides. Mm, see, the parade homicides. Versus the leg. And, and as the judge said, not the heart or her head, her torso and not her head. That would have compromised her life. Exactly. That did not stop him from downplaying that. I look at that as this is someone. Whom you've had a long relationship with. Whom you have created a child. I feel sorry for that child. <laughs> and you, you disposed of her as if she were roadkill. The man is mani maniacal. And that. See, I'm up here accusing the judge of being too nice. Uh uh. I'm being too nice. Call him in, calling him a man. That's maniacal. Nah, he ain't no man. Well, if he is a man, he's a sorry excuse for a man. I know that's right. Behavior by itself is outrageous. Then, you factor in the intimidation. Yeah, he intimidated her remotely from a cell. That's crazy. <laughs> the quotes from that jail call, those jail calls. Not I was getting ready to say, if he had an iPhone, I would have been like, he he did it from two cells. The cell phone and from the cell that he's that he's housed in. Let me get up out of here. <laughs> the usual, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of intimidating jail calls that involve, let's be together. If you want us to be together. You have to get this drop so we can be together. And I can show you how very much I look. I've heard that a million times on jail calls. But when that didn't seem to work, you doubled down and intimidated her. No, wait a minute. Can I stop here? Notice what the judge is doing. And we see so many parallelisms in light of that. Because she is emphasizing <clears throat> or displaying when Mr. Brooks doesn't get his way, what happens? He doubles down. He goes even further. And guess what? We saw a, a, an existential pattern of that during the, the Waukesha trial. Every time. Incessantly. The judge would deny his request. Or deny something that he was trying to present that was utterly outrageous. What did he do? He doubled down and kept sparring with the judge. Back and forth. Like that was going to ameliorate. Like that was going to, to advance you. Or your case. Not at the very least. You see what I'm saying? So we, see a, we saw a pattern of that. We saw it play out in the courtroom. So I'm not surprised that he doubled down on Erica. 
He did that at the Waukesha Parade. When he when he said that he had, y'all remember, he said he had exculpatory evidence. And we found out that the only thing that was exculpatory is what the state had against him. He brought speculation. So I just find it ironic how we see the parallelisms, how he was with Erica. You know, in theory, was how, how he was in the Walker Shaw courtroom. All right, come on, let's go. Come on, come on. In such a manner, Mr. Jones may say it's not the worst because there wasn't any. Thank you so much to Kelly Hyman for joining us. All right. Now, uh, we're, that's Court TV, but let me... Uh, Fast forward. It. But listen, y'all, I want y'all to comment in here. What do y'all think about that? You know, I just think that it's so insulting. It is humiliating. Um, it's it's oh my god, it's it's absolute horrific. Um, how his concern was that he didn't get the chance to see his daughter walk down the aisle. I mean, just limpidly dismissing what he did. Dismissing what he did. We saw a pattern that we saw a pattern of that interrogation. Dismissing what he did. And trying to make the Erica Patterson, not incident, attack, given his conviction. More important. He dismisses and he only cares about himself. Let's keep on. Let me fast forward this. We're back in the courtroom. For the judge's bench and began attacking Judge Holthus during a sentencing hearing earlier this year. Now, he was initially charged oh, with minute. seven total counts. Yeah, that's a different judge. I'll say. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, that was crazy. I might do a uh, commentary on that. Y'all remember? Y'all see that when that man jumped up there? I don't even know how he was that adjacent to the judge. But they got wise the next time they had him in there, man. They had, they had a coterie of police there to ensure that we wouldn't have a parallelism and or repeat of what happened previously. All right, let's get back into the Daryl Brooks. Come on. From the incident, there was no trial at that point. Who knows what may have happened at some point this is the very first part where the only thing you're in control of is trying to get her to call the police, call the DA's office. You notice, you notice she said, the only thing you're in control of. That Exactly. He was in custody and still had control over Erica Patterson. Trying to get her to drop this. Right. While he's in custody. That's how afraid, frightened. That's how daunting this situation was that she was involved with. My love, my love. I mean, think about that. How do you have control from jail? <laughs> my God. Can you imagine how much control he has when he's not in custody? That's what I'm talking about. Well, I guess her black eye would be the answer to that. Anyway, come on. And say, I'm not in. I'm not prosecuting. So that, that was what you had. And the other thing, the other thing. He was on a jail phone call. He don't think that they, they were listening? The prosecution? You don't think they heard everything he said? I hate to say this, but him and Tory Lane should be friends. Because they both have something in common. Touch your neighbor say self-incrimination. <laughs> because he was on a jail phone call. Incriminating himself. <laughs> oh, let's get back in here. <laughs> At your disposal. Was just to. So berate her. And so humiliate her and scare her remotely from a cell isn't that crazy <laughs> so 
asked to get her to do your bidding. Wow, he's in custody. That's crazy. Because you're locked up, right? We're exactly, custody. So you can't get her. Right. But what you did was you told her, I got guys. Uh, I got guys who were going to get you. Uh, the minute you walk out your house, they're going to get you. If I wanted you dead, I'd kill you. You'd be dead. Ah. Uh. I can't believe he said that. Or oh, that jail phone call. That is a horrible, horrible way to live. <laughs> because she may have 99% thought you were full of it. That is crazy. But that 1%. When she hears a noise in the house. But you know what? Can I just say something? But listen, if you notice, that's how the devil works. And I don't mean to talk about Erica Patterson in a negative way. But here's the point. She is mentally impotent. All right. Erica Patterson is mentally impotent. That means she's weak. Her mind is weak. Now, we pray that she got wiser since this because this this was the, well, what, what, what he did to her. That was a couple of years ago. So we can only hope, anticipate and pray that she's gotten wiser. OK, when it comes to uh, the essentiality. Of having your right mind, having your intelligence, having potency of the mind. But what I'm saying is, um, Erica Patterson was mentally impotent. And that's what the enemy does. The enemy will try to find the weakest link to try to go mess with. It's called mind control. Not only that, it's called witchcraft. Because witchcraft is the control of the mind. This man. The judge just said he was locked up, but he was mentally controlling her irrespective of his <clears throat> irrespective of him being locked up, his custodial status. OK, that's control. That's witchcraft. That's the devil at work. He goes to the weakest link. That's why you got to be strong. That's why the Bible says be strong in the law. You can't be weak. When you fooling with the enemy, touch your neighbor, say you can't be, you can't afford to be. Come on, come on. Weak minded. All right, I don't mean to preach. Let me come on. Let's get on here. Get back in here. Or send your daughter off to school. I'm your daughter in high school. That's all you care. Half an hour late coming home from school. I'm talking with her friends. Busy. Whatever. And what does that do to EP? Oh my God. Erica Patterson. Did someone grab her? Is this it? She wasn't talking about the electric piano. <laughs> EP. <laughs> Did you call all this right, guy? Because <laughs> I didn't do his bidding fast enough. That's absolutely horrendous behavior. That's, ab that's absolutely far kind. <coughs> You're being too nice. And it <laughs> is who you were. It's who you demonstrated yourself to be. Whether that was the full content of your character, I can't speak to. But on those days, that's who you demonstrated yourself to be. A monster. I very much hope that you are on the path that you described. Because you likely have a very long life ahead of you. Well, it's unfortunate that um, Wisconsin doesn't have the death penalty because he should be on the, on the path of death row. But then again, somebody was telling me in a video before, I think I had mentioned that before, they said, no, 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 no. Let him rot. See, dying is too easy. That's him getting out of this. We got to put up with the opposition of the world. You know, we can't. In other words, we can't let him off the hook that easy. Let him rot. Let him suffer. <laughs> yeah, and then let him go to hell. No, I'm playing. <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> you spoke to your prisons, your custody status. Are you held in segregation? Are you by yourself? What, what goes on there? house then uh say you are yes i appreciate the efforts that you're undertaking to better yourself 
Well, why? I mean, it, it, it wasn't rocket science, you know. Why didn't he act like this in the in the trial with the Walker Show Parade? I don't, you know. Why did it take this? Because this ain't more serious than all the homicides that he did previously. So why is this? Well, you notice he's taking. He's much more emotional here. Doesn't make any sense, man. This this dude is cold and callous. And if that is going to come through classes or anchor management or reflection, as you put it, all the better. I have no idea, nor am I considering what's going to happen with appeals and all of that sort of thing. I don't believe there's going to be an appeal. <laughs> but you have to live with yourself. And by yourself. And getting right with yourself is going to serve you as well as humanity. So, the first thing, as Mr. Jones mentioned, is that I need to consider whether probation is appropriate. No, I know probation. Uh -uh. No one's asking for probation. Probation is not at all appropriate here. Exactly. So I reject that. So this will be a prison sentence. Yes, yes. I you feel asked good. and I promised that I would take this as it was for itself. And I will. This incident happened before Waukesha. And I don't mean to, by any sense, give short shrift to what happened there. But this is what is before this court. So I do believe that this is a prison sentence. I also adopt the state's theory of these are separate acts. Your behavior in what happened at that hotel and then following her to the gas station and running her over. Wow. Was one day. He did he did and a show. You came to jail. He did a shug night. That's what he in jail for. Then he run over somebody. Well, the only difference is his was a homicide. <laughs> That's why the judge told Daryl, you're lucky that it didn't compromise her torso, her head. Yeah, because she would have died. <laughs> That's crazy. Not in the situation any further. Not faced with her. Not presumably in the midst of anger. You may have been angry about a variety of things, but not... In a face-to-face, -face, we're having an argument, anger. And you opted to violate the court's orders by contacting her, by contacting your mother and putting her in the middle of everything. See, see, contacting. How did they know he contacted? Because they're listening. They're listening. That's incrimination. <laughs> like, I mean, did he not know that? <laughs> he didn't know that. Well, you know what? I'm not surprised. Maybe, you know what? Maybe he did not know that they were listening. Because let's go back to the Waukesha Parade trial. Y'all remember when Dow Brooks had said that he talked about the Reddit post where he believed that it was one of the jurors that wrote that post and it had to be from somebody that had knowledge, you know, of what was going on in the trial. And so I'm thinking, well, didn't he know that they were live streaming? <laughs> or watch this, maybe he didn't know. <laughs> Which means that post could have came from anybody given its live stream. And there were millions of people watching that. Trust me. That's why I'm making the video of it now. Because y'all y'all want to watch it. I know that's right. <laughs> ah, whoo, this man down is... Oh. But you notice how calm... You notice how you know how still he is. You don't you don't really hear. He's quiet. He's not saying much. But you couldn't get him to shut up when he was going back and forth with Judge Jennifer Doro. Come on, let's listen. And contacting EP directly and saying the things that you said, which were horrible. And I suspect she will never forget them. 
because after a relationship of that length, you may be a voice that is in her head. And I'm very sorry for her for that. Conditions of time that you are serving will include absolutely positively no contact with EP. Well, that, listen, he was given that order before. <laughs> and they found out that he did have contact. So that don't mean that he ain't going to violate again. By the way, I noticed that they're showing uh, on the left-hand side, there's a picture of his uh, previous attack with the Waukesha Parade. And this is a new, this is a recent Sad trial. Your child with EP is 17 years old. I don't, the state is not seeking a no contact order with her, are you? With the child? No. No, I'm not going to do that. She's about to start college. She will be in charge of whether there will be any contact. Wow, isn't that sad? His daughter is about to start college. But the one that he killed will never see college. Isn't that, isn't that horrible? But yet he's more concerned with his daughter. Ah, ah, that is so foul. That is so vulgar. That is detestable. Oh, you see how he's so insouciant. He don't care. He don't care. He's indifferent. That ain't important to him. Uh-uh. Are we supposed to feel sorry for him? Because he didn't get a chance to see his daughter walk down the aisle? But Jackson Sparks' mother had to see her son be enrolled down the aisle. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Ooh, I would have had him so fast... Out my courtroom so fast. Yeah, let's get back into this. There is a request for restitution. Have you gone over that, Mr. Jones? There's a stipulation on that. Okay. Uh, restitution in the amount of six hundred and fifty-six dollars and ninety-six cents. Yeah, but if he's indigent, how he gonna pay that? How he gonna pay that? He ain't got no money. That's why he was given a court upon appointed attorney because of his indigence. Well, he's getting a, you can't get blood out of a stone. Will be made payable to the crime victim compensation program. <laughs> With what money? <laughs> you will have to pay the DNA surcharge as well as the domestic abuse assessment. How? And any mandatory costs, fees, and assessments. Yeah, all right. I'm going to waive any non mandatory. I, you don't have the ability to pay exactly. any more than you are going to have to pay. Exactly. So I will waive those due to your inability to pay. Exactly. His payment should be the rest of his life behind bars until they take this fool out at a body bag and somebody should spit on that body bag and pee on his grave. What I have ordered <laughs> will be due and payable from your prison funds at a rate to be determined by the Department of Corrections, then will be payable as <laughs> part of any sort of extended supervision that you're released on. And if you are, um, after, if it's not paid by the end of extended supervision, it will convert to a civil judgment. Yeah, but civil for what? It, it, the civil means it has to do with money. He doesn't have any money. He's indigent. Now, I did hear after or post the trial in Waukesha that there was another hearing uh, where he was supposed to pay money in restitution. And they brought up the same argument. It was his indigence that would not be able to secure that, the restitution part of it. But then... They tried to say, well, if he gets any TV deals or TV deals in terms of, I'm talking about like interviews, you know, because he might be the, the next Charles Manson. Y'all know when Charles Manson did all that stuff? Child, them reporters was in that jail getting every interview and listening to that crazy man. Bye, bye, bye. And so they didn't, they didn't do that. They didn't do no, 
that interview in the absence of payment. So what am I saying? If he makes any money or gets any deals, that money that he make ought to go to restitution because he tore up that city. He tore up that city. It was in a disarray. Come on. You are now a convicted felon. You may not possess any firearms. Well, how are you going to do that? You cannot vote until your civil rights are restored. This was a violent felony, so you may not possess body armor. <laughs> she said you can't possess any firearms. Well, listen, I didn't know they had a gun store in the in the in the in the, in the, in the jail. <laughs> that he could walk in there and just get get one. Uh uh. He ain't gonna possess. He's never coming out to even possess one. Oh, and sense. if you violate that no contact order, you could face additional charges. I am going to <laughs> order. <Additional. laughs> Wait, but how do you get additional charges when he was already serving 700 years previous to that? Come on, man. Additional. <laughs> he won't even be alive. Strike that. <laughs> I'm going to encourage you. And I say this because of your custody status. Custodial status. Come on, get it right. I'm going to encourage you to participate in any sort of programming that is available to you. I'm not ordering it because it may conflict directly with your custody situation. Right, because that's two different departments. And I don't want to put you in a situation where you cannot do something that I've ordered because of your custody situation. So I'm going to encourage you to take domestic... So, all right, so basically it's not an order. It's not an order. So it's not obligatory. She's just recommending. It's no different than the president. If you had a Democratic president and the Democratic president wanted the governor of Florida, who happens to be Ron DeSantis, by the way, who happens to be a Republican, and he said, I want you to make marijuana legal. Well, the president doesn't have carte blanche or full authority to make that governor do anything. You see what I'm saying? In other words, it's not obligatory. It's not a mandate. It's up to the governor whether he wants to comply to that or not. You see what I'm saying? So again, this is not an order. It's up to Dow if he wants to comply relative to seeking assistance. The man is mentally ill. <laughs> and I don't think that it's a surprise. It's a surprise. Come on. Violence, intervention programming, anger management, and individual therapy. Yeah, but that's up to him. Whether that will be made available to you as part of your prison sentence, I don't know. If, for some I will, reason, I will do my part to find out. So I'm. Um, I know you will. Yeah, but that don't even matter, though. If for some reason... Because <laughs> it's not an order. <laughs> you are released on extended supervision on this case and released into the community. Those will revert to being suggestions to orders. Okay? Yes, ma'am. So, oh. if you're released, they will... Be yes, ma'am. You see how respectful he is? So, he went from, how can you even call yourself a judge? Now he said, yes, man. <laughs> Y'all see the irony? A bit of a little bit of hypocrisy on, on Mr. Brooks's part. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a change of tone. Look at about it. Touch a neighbor say, Mr. Brooks is singing a new tune. It's entitled Yes, man. Yes, man. <laughs> Court orders then if you have not already completed them. In your prison setting. So now I need to turn All right. to. Well, listen, I'm not going to. Uh, we've been on here for a protracted amount of time. I'm actually getting tired. We're going to upload this. But again, I had a lot more to say. But we're going to start. We're going to. Um, there's going to be a, re a recrudescence of me um, talking about the fool in. Uh, well, that's right. I got to stop myself. He's not the fool in question. The convict, the convict that happens to be a fool. I'm going to be making more, and so be on the lookout. Please share the video. I would like you to comment. 
and so interesting. I love reading your comments and how it aligns uh, relative to Daryl uh, concerning his ineptness, his stupidity. We all saying the same thing. <laughs> we all say the same thing. And so I want you again to comment, like, and share. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening.